through a laundry list of teaching aids that you could use in your classroom, in your professional practice to convey these concepts of sharing device, design, solar geometry, etc. to students uh, who wish to learn more about how to use the sun and stay away from it when required to have a sustainable building. The first two ideas we have for teaching aids have already been addressed in the earlier parts of the training. One is the shadow masking exercise which students could do for real objects around their own building, uh, their own college building for instance and also the exercise on how to shade or how to size the shading devices for perhaps even their own home if they have experienced a lot of solar radiation issues. Uh, these could be very uh, useful examples that they could work upon rather than choosing abstract or remote locations where they do not have any sort of uh, emotional connection to that, to that place. We always recommend providing contextualized sort of uh, case studies for the students to work upon and that could be utilized here for shadow masking and sharing devices. There are also software tools to be able to design sharing devices, to size them, the depth, etc. for different kinds of cities and different kinds of locations. These are all available to uh, people who wish to delve deeper into these software tools as links over here. Here are some modifications you could make in your classroom. This is uh, a derivative of the school of thought which is called the building as a learning aid school of design where rather than you know losing opportunities or wasting opportunities to convey simple geometrical and mathematical concepts you use the entire building's surfaces and all the spaces in it to convey and gently nudge these uh, ideas into the into the consciousness of the students who who study in these schools so these are some ideas we have presented here to convert your building into a learning aid itself uh, to teach concepts of solar geometry in this case. Here is a set of teaching aids that are all used to convey the concepts of solar geometry, the movement of the sun around in the sky which is increasingly becoming a very difficult thing for uh, students to visualize because of their uh, lack of contextualize experiences around this, this concept because the inability to tell time now because uh, of the advent of digital technologies and also the proliferation of software tools which do a lot of this work. So the intuitive sense of the position of the sun in the sky needs to be recultivated and here is a pretty large set of tools that could be constructed and used as teaching aids by teachers in classrooms. So let's start with them. The first set of teaching aids has got to do with constructing these imaginary solar windows which in this case are no longer imaginary they can actually be, uh, be um, constructed and used for creating a visual sense of what the sun's path around the sky would look at look like for different kinds of latitudes. So as indicated earlier at the equator the solar window will be purely vertical uh, and, and symmetrical around the the uh, equator whereas at, at different uh, intermediate latitudes there will be a certain angle uh, between the, the perfectly perpendicular sort of sun path and the actual angle that the sun would take for example. At the poles uh, this is what the sun path would look like. So this is a simple way to help start, uh, help uh, trigger some visualization and imagination amongst your students around the path of the sun. So this is uh, what you could do is you could place this sun path diagram or this cutout over a globe and that would give a sense of how the angle of the axis also has an interplay to determine what the sun's position will look like on a relative basis for the north and for the southern hemisphere. Right. This is a tool called the climate calendar. This can start creating a sense of where the prevailing directions of wind are in your region, where is most of the solar radiation coming in from, which window is it coming, at what time of the year is it a problem, what time of the year is it not a problem. So this is a calendar that can be created, there are worksheets available on the web etc. to be able to measure this throughout the year. Of course this is a very elaborate exercise to conduct over 
or 12 month period but perhaps over a summer break or some sort of shortened time period students can construct a uh, climate calendar or at least refer to the climate calendar that might have been created for their for their city uh, or for their location this by the way also includes rainfall data because that can also be used advantageously for creating cooling during some times of the year this is a tool which is called a solar chart plotter what this allows you to do is it allows you to actually trace the line that the sun would make based on its position outside and despite the presence of whatever shading devices are available so as one can see what uh, what has happened here is this is a representation of a room exposed to the sun this is the occupant inside and what one can do is depending on where the sun is striking during different times of the year at different times of the day one can start drawing lines and one would see that the shading devices here for instance are only effective from you can see that only beyond march right in the winter months leading up to march there is a lot of solar radiation coming in which might be acceptable if this is a a cold uh, location or a moderately um, heated location but if this was for example a place which had high solar radiation problems we might need to extend the horizontal shading device to cut the sun out during these months especially for example october so this is a solar chart plotter which is again can be a, a mock version of it can be created as a box and this could be placed in the sun uh, outside the classroom or on the rooftop and these lines could be drawn throughout an extended period of time to create your own solar chart this is a solar chart plotter which is a simple uh, contraption made out of a ping pong ball a pencil and the sun is represented by a a pencil here and by moving the sun around the earth or the earth around the sun whichever way you would be able to indicate the line or the the place at which the the sun's rays hit the earth the angle and also the path that it traces through the earth surface this also indicates the relative amount of time this point spends in the sunlight in summer versus it spends in darkness in the summer which is reversed of course in winter so this is a solar chart plotter this is a solar protractor which is what we used to do the shading device design this is just a three dimensional version of it what it does is it allows you to visualize the way the sun's rays strike a certain site so this merges the idea of the solar window with the flat solar protractor so one can imagine where the sun is coming in into the building at what angle this is a solar scope a solar scope is essentially a table right a flat surface on which you can keep a mock version of your building model so this is a cardboard version of a building model and a sundial specific to the location now a sundial essentially has a pin or in this case a toothpick and the solar chart is essentially plotted here in a curved manner and depending on where the shadow of the pin falls one can read the time of the day and the day of the year on a simple thing like a solar uh, like a sundial now what this sundial is doing here on this solar scope is by moving the the platform around right it, it is able to to pivot on a on a hinge that's been provided below this one can mimic different times of the year rather than wait for that time period to actually arrive right so what one can do is one can orient it in such a way that it mimics a certain day and month of the year and one can see what the solar implications for that building are just over one afternoon you can basically estimate the the entire year's performance one can see the inadequacy of shading devices etc so for example this is the solar scope which has been rearranged and moved around till this pin points at 11 am on may 1st so remember that exercise we did with the pencil or the cursor this is nothing but simulating that same sort of process and this is showing that i am at 11 am sorry 11 am on may 1st and this is the east wall so this is what the building would look like 
on the inside at 11 a.m. on May 1st. But this could have been done in August. This activity could have been done in August. Uh, and we can see whether there is too much sunlight coming here, are the vertical shading devices effective, so on and so forth. This is another extension of that same idea. This is a sundial and here I am on the same afternoon trying to mimic March 1st say at 2 p.m. and October at 3 p.m. Is the building able to shade itself? Where are most of my shading problems? As you can see in October I don't have a shading problem here but in March I will definitely have a shading problem. So I need perhaps some short shading devices inside to be able to shield this building from the sun. This is May 115 south wall. These are just extensions of the same idea using the sundial to uh, try and predict the shading performance of the building. This is a sun tracker which is essentially a tool to create your own sun chart. By just pointing this to the sun and making markings of where the shadow falls, one is able to track or uh, trace the path of the sun over multiple days and create your own sun path lines. So if one either does not want to deliberately use softwares to download these sun paths, but rather wants to create a very tactile feel and create you know, some sort of experiential learning for students, this would be a better way to generate a sun chart rather than just downloading it from the internet. This is a device which is also like a sun tracker but it can be used for directly calculating the shading depths that a building might require. So for example this is a scaled model of a window and I am orienting it appropriately say for example this is a south facing window. What I will first do is I will use a straw which is, associated, which is attached to a protractor and this straw is used to and uh, we use it to point to the sun. Now in order to be able to cut this kind of shading angle down I will need a shading device that will extend all the way up to here. So I could use a string and I could measure this distance which will tell me that if my window height is say one foot how many feet of depth will I need for the shading device to cut this particular sun angle down. So rather than doing it on pen and paper this is actually a measured exercise uh, which of course makes it much more exciting for uh, students of architecture and people who like to think visually rather than think of equations so on and so forth. So that is a very useful design tool. These are just simple ways of indicating you know what it feels like when you have the morning sun, the evening sun, the noon sun so on and so forth um, using a light bulb and a lamp as a uh, surrogate for the sun. This uh, teaching aid here is just trying to indicate that models, accurately made scaled models can really predict true life conditions very very accurately. So this is a, the, an actual office of a person in Delhi and this is a scaled model of that same office and one can see that the lighting conditions that are prevalent in the scaled model versus the real world are quite similar. which tries to you know, emphasize the benefits of making scale models, something which again is, uh, is a practice that, is, uh, that has deteriorated over time and is not practiced too much. So this is a, a call to start making scale models to become more thoughtful building designers. Here are other examples of where scale models become very good predictors of lighting and shading conditions that can prevail in a building. Um, and all of this can be predicted rather than reacted to uh, once the building has been constructed. So this concludes our hopefully comprehensive session and understanding of the, the implications of the movement of the sun across the sky and what can be done about it to harness it when needed and to reject it when it creates thermal comfort issues for the building. If you have further questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us uh, on our email addresses or through our portal fairconditioning.org. Thank you.